Welcome to Monticello Podcasts, where we look at various aspects of Monticello, Thomas Jefferson, and the work of the Thomas Jefferson Foundation, which has owned and operated Monticello since 1923. I'm Chad Woolerton, Monticello's webmaster. You may know that Jefferson, along with his friend and fellow signer of the Declaration of Independence, John Adams, both died on the same day, July 4, 1826, 50 years after what we have come to view as Independence Day in the United States. It was a remarkable coincidence that even then filled people with a sense of poignancy and awe. Today, in honor of the 230th anniversary of the Declaration and the 180th anniversary of Jefferson's death, we offer Jefferson's last publicly directed words. On June 24, 1826, Jefferson declined an invitation by Roger C. Waitman, then mayor of Washington, D.C., to attend celebrations of the 50th anniversary of the Declaration. This was the very day that University of Virginia physician Dr. Robley Dunglinson was first called to Monticello to attend Jefferson in his final illness. Yet Jefferson took the opportunity not just to offer a polite regret, but to add a stirring political testament that left no doubt about the significance of the events of 1776 and the nation's future. Monticello, June 24th, 1826. Respected Sir, The kind invitation I receive from you on the part of the citizens of the city of Washington to be present with them at their celebration on the 50th anniversary of American independence as one of the surviving signers of an instrument pregnant with our own and the fate of the world is most flattering to myself and heightened by the honorable accompaniment proposed for the comfort of such a journey. It adds sensibly to the sufferings of sickness to be deprived by it of a personal participation in the rejoicings of that day. But acquiescence is a duty, under circumstances not placed among those we are permitted to control. I should indeed with peculiar delight have met and exchanged their congratulations personally with the small band, the remnant of that host of worthies who joined with us on that day in the bold and doubtful election we were to make for our country between submission or the sword, and to have enjoyed with them the consolatory fact that our fellow citizens, after half a century of experience and prosperity, continue to approve the choice we made. May it be to the world what I believe it will be, to some parts sooner, to others later, but finally to all, the signal of arousing men to burst the chains under which monkish ignorance and superstition have persuaded them to bind themselves, and to assume the blessings and security of self-government. That form which we have substituted restores the free right to the unbounded exercise of reason and freedom of opinion. All eyes are opened, or opening, to the rights of man. The general spread of the light of science has already laid open to every view the palpable truth that the mass of mankind has not been born with saddles on their backs, nor a favored few booted and spurred, ready to ride them legitimately by the grace of God. These are grounds of hope for others, for ourselves let the annual return of this day forever refresh our recollections of these rites and an undiminished devotion to them. I will ask permission here to express the pleasure with which I should have met my ancient neighbors of the city of Washington and its vicinities, with whom I passed so many years of a pleasing social intercourse, an intercourse which so much relieved the anxieties of the public cares and left impressions so deeply engraved in my affections as never to be forgotten. With my regret that ill health forbids me the gratification of an acceptance, be pleased to receive for yourself and those for whom you write the assurance of my highest respect and friendly attachments. Thomas Jefferson
If you're looking for something to do this July 4th, you might want to think about coming to our Independence Day celebration and naturalization ceremony, which is free, and this year features the remarks of artists Christo and Jean-Claude. If you can't make it, think about downloading and listening to the podcast of a reading of the Declaration of Independence. There's also the podcast, A Culinary Independence, Jefferson for July 4th, which may inspire you to cook up a Jeffersonian meal this Independence Day. Thanks for listening.